Welcome back, humans! You know what day it is, and I'm back with a middle of the week vent session. And before I get started, my name is Jaime, and hit that notification. I'm here twice a week. Also, hit me with a subscription and smash that like button. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm ready to vent today. Got some more vents. All kinds of stuff's been happening. I mean... You know, just a little break from what's, you know, the crazy hectic stuff. I might get a little bit on it, but I ain't going to hang out with it. I ain't going to hang out in, in that realm, you know. But I got some vents here. Got some pretty good ones. Got some pretty good ones, humans. The bird chest. You're probably wondering what that title's all about. It's all about when you're like, you know, you're not a big guy. Like myself, you're like a skinny person. And then you, you, you know, like I was at the gym, so I'm feeling good. And I'm just flexing my bird chest. So now I'm feeling good and like I'm pumped up. <laughs> so that's where the title came from. In case you was wondering. <laughs> On with it, shall we? So last weekend, man, there was a fight. Uh, Legend went and got in the ring. Vander Holyfield, Vander Real Deal Holyfield got in the ring. And he fought Vito Belfort. How do you say his name? Belfort? Or is it Belfort? Is the T silent? I don't know. But they fought his ass, you know, and uh, he looked in great shape. Like, he looked really good. You see him training. Um, he looked a little slow in training. I was just thinking maybe he was just, like, you know, preserving energy. I don't know. Because he looks, you know, he looks in tremendous shape. You know, and then when you talk to him, you know, he seems just real calm and stuff like that. You know, so even Tyson's calm, too. Like, he's even kind of like that. So, I don't, you know, I don't know what to think. I don't know what to think. You know, I just think he looks like he's in great shape. You know, and then the fight night comes, and, you know, my buddy... Um, you know, text me and he's like, who you got? You know, and I picked Holyfield. I was like, man, he looked pretty good. I'm gonna pick Holyfield over the UFC guy. And, um, I was way wrong, man. You know, like I was telling you, when you watch a fighter, you know, you watch one of your favorite fighters that you like, and then, uh, you, you realize when they're in the ring way too long, you know, and you're watching it with your bare eyes, you know, like I, when I watched the Manny fight, I was like, man, he got real slow at the end there, ran out of juice, you know? And, uh, so it was like, it was just tough, you know, it was just tough to watch that happen. You know what I mean? So Holyfield got in there. He looked really kind of sad. You know, it looked, it did not look good. You know, that guy came over there and just started, you know, bulldozed him right away. Just started punching him a lot and Holyfield couldn't do nothing. He was kind of trying to do his old school, like he was trying to do like his warrior, you know, style. I don't know if you guys remember anybody out there. I'm sure you do. If you know Holyfield in boxing, uh, you know, he had that warrior style. Like he would work in your, you know, through your offense by taking some punches, blocking some, absorbing some things to get in there to, you know, get inside and, you know, work inside and things like that, you know. And uh, he was trying that stuff, but it seemed like his, um, what do they call it, like his mechanics weren't, you know, really there this time. You know what I mean? They weren't uh, communicating on the same page because he was just like late reacting to everything, man, and taking too many punches real quick. And then he got knocked down, and then he got knocked down again. And um, so the referee ended up stopping it because he was just, like I said, just taking a lot of punches. He was fighting like... Rocky Balboa style, you know what I'm saying? Like eating like a hundred jabs and shit. And uh, so they had to stop the fight, man. I mean, I agree with the referee because it was just like getting worse. And then what made it, you know, kind of tough at the end there, they interview him and he act like nothing was wrong. You know, he's like, oh, I'm ready to do it again. And I'm like, man, really? Because you didn't look that good in the ring. You look in tremendous shape, but you didn't look that good in the ring. And I'm just keeping it real. I'm a fan of Holyfield and he did not look good, good in the ring at all. At all. His open workouts was the probably best highlights of his, you know, that boxing. I wonder what his sparring was like because those guys probably punched him a lot and that's probably affected him, you know, at fight night. I'm wondering if that had, a, you know, an effect to it. Because, man, he just looked really bad. <laughs> and then you had, you know, legendary uh, UFC MMA fighter uh, Anderson Silva. Went against Tito Ortiz, another legend fighter. And uh, they went in the boxing ring, got with each other. And uh, that was more boxing, except, you know, uh, Silva seemed to have the more experience. He still looks old, but he had, like, the more experience uh, between him and Tito. And so, like, Tito came in there and was, like, you know, getting some punches in. And Silva was kind of setting him up. Like, uh, you can tell his experience as far, like I said, it wasn't no, like, super amazing, you know, technique. If he was younger with that, you know, you've seen what he, you know, what he used to do in MMA. He had that kind of same movement, you know, but with the legs and, 
you don't got to worry about getting tackled or, you know, all that kind of stuff. So he was, you know, had the movement going. And then uh, Tito Ortiz started dropping some hooks. And, you know, and he was taking a few of them and absorbing a few, but he was kind of letting them open up because Tito Ortiz just had, like, no defense when he started throwing those punches. He thought Silva was hurt or he was going to knock him out, so he just started going. And then Silva saw the opening and just hit him with, like, two right hands and, like, knocked Tito Ortiz, like, all the way out. Like, all the way out. Like, he was KO'd. And uh, he was a good sport about it, you know what I mean? He said he wants to do it again. He wants to box again. Um, he gave shots to, uh, shout outs to Silva because, you know, she'll, Silva's been doing it longer. Man, when I was really surprised when Silva beat Chavez Jr. Like, it was wild, dude. Like, and Chavez Jr. used to be really good, man. And I don't know what happened. It seemed like when he fought, like, Canelo and then he went on to, like, fight that fun Fara guy, he went into, like, light heavyweight or something. It just seemed like his, like, I don't know, man. Something just ha- happened, you know. He, I mean, he just lost the passion for it, you know, and was just getting in there for checks because, it just, I don't know, because when he fought Silva, I mean, Silva outboxed him, like, for real. And he's a younger guy, too, man. And Silva just, like, outboxed him in that boxing match. It was just wild. But, uh, like I said, man, it was tough to see Holyfield, too. It was a great fight night. It was tough to see Holyfield get beat up. <laughs> you know, and that was the main event. It was all super quick. But, hey, man, it's, that's what it is. It's boxing. It's always that se- that's, uh, second to be punched, and it could be over. Like when Tyson was in his prime. Shit was over fast, man, if he wasn't ready. You know, he would go the distance on a few fights, but it wasn't many. You know, I mean, he was just, like, straight up hit- hitting dudes. And then, like I said, he was going through some things personally, and I think he should have stepped away from the ring when, when he didn't. He, I think he stayed in too long. And then he suffered the consequences. That's why I thought it was really cool to see him get back in the ring with Roy Jones. And, you know, they just kind of did a little semi-spar session, you know. But it was cool to see Michael uh, under control. You know what I mean? Like, to see him under control, not this, like, wild guy in the ring. You know what I mean? It looked like he could have just went off if he wanted, but he didn't. You know, and it was just that I just thought showed, a, you know, I thought that was entertaining in in a way. <laughs> but... um. Like I said, I'm really enjoying these fights when they're doing these. Like I said, it's tough. But that one, I think, was tough. I just, I don't think they should have let Holyfield in the ring. I don't know who did his test. But, I mean, it was a big name. He, it was supposed to be De La Hoya. But De La Hoya got sick. So, I mean, he was a last-minute replacement. But it was also a big name. But I think, um, they, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if he sparred a lot before this match. And that had an effect on it. But it just looked like his motor skills were just a little bit late. A little late. A little late, in my opinion. But anyways, on with some more Vince. <laughs> Watching some news clips or, you know, going through and seeing people catching people slipping. Uh, there was live TV going on. And some world leaders in France or somewhere. It was like, I don't know, some world leaders out there. I guess they didn't realize that the camera was on during some live TV. They were on some live TV news. <laughs> and they... uh didn't none of, nobody had their masks on. <laughs> nobody did. Like, not the whole group. And it was all like, they could have all hugged in the group photo. You could have did it with an iPhone. You didn't even need, like, a real camera, like, a professional cam. You could use a regular phone. And that's how close everybody was. And then they forgot, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got the clip. And they, and like, they, they forget they got their masks on. I just think it's hilarious. They're sitting here all hyped up, talking with each other, chilling. And then they realize the cameras are on, and they all just start tripping. Guy comes up with his on, telling everybody, oh, man, camera's on, man. Camera's on, man. Camera's on. And look at him all fixing his tie like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. look at that one dude. Look how smooth he was. He had that shit up his sleeve. He had that shit like a pickpocket. Look at that stuff, man. That was pretty damn quick. So they didn't realize they was on live TV. And, uh, yeah, so then that happened. <laughs> You got to watch yourself sometimes. There's a lot of things like that when you're on live TV and you can't, you know, you don't realize till it's too late. You know, um, you see a lot of those news clips where some of the reporters are there and just people just jump in the background. You know, these people are just ready to tell everybody, you know, what to do, you know, follow orders and shit. But we're not going to do it. They're going to say, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> or something like that. We're supposed to just listen when they're not even doing it. And I wonder... If now, is it safe to say that this is being politicized? 
Could it, say, could it be this is being a little politicized? Is it safe to say that now? I mean, not just making an assumption. I'm saying based off that clip, I mean, they weren't following these guidelines that we're supposed to got, we're supposed to do, we're supposed to follow. I don't understand. It makes you ask questions. It makes me ask a lot of questions. Like, like I said, and now is it safe to say is this politicized? I mean, a lot of people are saying it. I don't want to just be like jumping in line and stuff like that. But I'm always, you know, open to do my own research and look at things. I mean, this kind of shows like they're not listening to the rules. And then, uh, like, and then you hear this one doctor that's under the hot, you know, under the hot mess right now, and they're trying to, you know, find out some questions because the dude seems to be lying. And I know, I, I always know if you lie in court and things like that, or lie under oath, you're supposed to be in like big trouble. You hear about other celebrities or other people that have lied under oath, and then you get in big trouble. Sometimes jail time. I don't know what you do. You get in trouble. That's all I know. There's consequences to it. And uh, this dude's been lying, you know, it's, you, you just, he, it's just hard to, you know, backtrack on your, you know, what you already said. Like when people are going back to old ass Twitter's posts for people and trying to cancel celebrities because of old ass shit when you were allowed to say it back then. You were allowed to say it back then and now you're trying to cancel people now. You can't like rewind. That's why I think it's like crazy when um, they attack like historical things and things like, you know what I mean? Because that's like back then, man, this is. We're not doing that now. There might be some crazy shit going on. No, yes, there is. But not like that. Not like that. You know it ain't happening like that. <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> I was watching some of the EMAs. And um, <laughs> I was getting a good laugh because. I was looking at all the fashion, you know, like when they do the runways <laughs> and uh, you get all the runway stuff like that. And you see everybody's like wild outfits and they just think they look awesome. But I guess, you know, there's probably a lot of fans out there probably think they do look awesome because it's probably like the rock star gear. You know, it's the new rock star stuff you're supposed to wear. But I'm not one of those people because <laughs> I just think. Some of that stuff looks pretty funny, you know what I mean? I, I, I'm just saying there was a lot of wild outfits out there. There was some nice outfits, some classy outfits, some cool new fashion, you know, smooth stuff. And then there was some wild. But, I mean, I know everybody has their own style, you know, if you're a rock star or whatever. Which I don't believe this dude is a rock star. I don't feel like that music is rock, in my opinion. Not to upset anybody. I just don't feel like it's rock. But I'm talking about MGK. So I see him at the awards. He shows up with his girlfriend, I don't know if their girlfriend or um, engaged or whatever, but he's with his girl and they show up in, in, you know, in their flashy outfits, you know, and I just thought it was like, oh man, that's a bright, you know, bright outfit, you know, and then they get closer to his face and I was like, what the hell is that? I'm like, what is that? <laughs> they get close to his face. Like, I thought it was like semen on his face. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't that look like semen on his face? <laughs> do not say like, like semen barnacles. Like, he was in fucking Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, saying he was that dude in the dark alley, you know, in the glory hole. He was the dead pirate in the glory hole pirate. And and he got the sea, semen barnacles on his face still. You know, that's what it reminds me of. Like, they just, like, forgot about that character. It was in the director's cut when you buy the Blu-ray. You know, when you got the disc with the special features, that clip is in there. Where he's the glory hole dead pirate. And he got all that semen barnacles. That looks like some semen barnacles. It looks like semen, like all over the place. Like it's over there on this side. It's over there on this side. Like we're like almost like uh, something about Mary. Like it's almost some hair gel. And then you got over like right by your eye and your nose. And it looks like it's like running down. Almost in the, almost in the shape of a musical note. <laughs> it's almost in the shape of a musical note. But uh, psh, I don't know, man. I don't mean to offend people, but I keep saying semen. But it looks like damn semen. I mean, tell me, what do you think it looks like? Put in the comments what you think that looks like. I think it's like semen barnacles. Semen barnacles. I might have to change the name of this to semen barnacles. It might be one thing in the beginning and then semen barnacles at the end. Because this has to be answered. This has to be addressed. We need to know what this is. Like, damn, it's like weird. Like, I could see putting like some jewels or bedazzling in your face, right? But it, did you have to put it in the form of like you getting a facial, you getting the money shot, 
from pirates in the glory hole of the Pirates of the Caribbean. Deleted scenes. Check it out. What is that? Does that look cool? I mean, I'm an older person, so I don't know, you know, what's in. Like, is that cool to glue stuff that looks like semen splatters on your face? Is that like what's cool when you go out to the club? Well, I see that all the time. I'll be like, oh, man, you you know, try to signal a dude because he's with some chick. You know, it used to be the, the, the cool wingman sometimes. You see somebody dancing or something's on his face and you don't even know the person. But this is how, how cool we was back then before everybody's all weird and, you know, separated now. Well, you see somebody in the club like, oh, man, my man's chasing with that girl. He don't even know he's got something hanging. I'd be like, you know, give him the signal real quick. And he's like, oh, man, he wipes the booger off his nose or shit. Like, you the man, you know, he might even get a beer off the deal. You help somebody out. <laughs> somebody need to tell him, like, dude, kind of looks like semen on your face. He's got an entourage unless they're just all yes people. Like, oh, it looks great, man. It looks great. It's kind of weird. I don't know, man. Like I said, I don't know if that's in. And all I know is like, I, while they were there, it must have bothered Conor McGregor. He's like, what is that? You know what I'm saying? Is it some semen barnacles? And he went up and fucking, you know, tried to punch MGK in the face. He went after MGK. He had a cane and everything, like, and dropped a cane. And, you know, and did all this Conor McGregor stuff. Like, yeah, you know, he did all Conor, went all Conor McGregor. Tried to stalk my man. I don't know if he did or not, but it looked pretty close. You know what I'm saying? It looked pretty close. And he almost knocked some, some of that semen barnacle. You know what I'm saying? Look, like he was going to knock some of that barnacle off off the MGK. <laughs> it was crazy. Like, he was going for the kill shot. Like Eminem did. Like, it's like a pa. He's going to give another kill shot to him. And it was crazy. <laughs> I was just like, what did I just see here? You know, semen barnacles. And he almost got punched in the face by McConaughey McGregor. It was kind of awesome. <laughs> But it's kind of crazy still. I can't get over this shit on his face. What do you think, humans? What do you think this looks like? I should just leave this picture up for the rest of the episode. Like, we can just analyze it as I continue to vent on other topics. Because it might inspire something new other than semen barnacles. So, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy to me. That's all I'm saying. I'm, I'm going to go to the next vent. <laughs> All right, here we go. Anyways, bef- you know what? I got one more thing to say before I go about this. <laughs> Somebody got all pissed off because I made a comment online about this dude, how I said M killed him and made him go to go to pop music. And then somebody was like, he's a rock star, dude, or rock music. And I just said, I don't agree that his music is rock. So I had to put that out there. I think his music is more like poppy kind of music. I don't feel like it's rock. If it is, then rock's really messed up now. Because I complained about it before, about it being like everybody's all sad. And then this dude's not that sad, but just doesn't seem like rock music. If it is, then wow. Then rock music is in trouble. As much as hip-hop is, if that's rock. So I'll get on with the events. <laughs> okay, I'm done with it now. I am done with it now. Humans, you got to be careful about people trying to scam with Amazon. It's kind of crazy because I started uh, noticing somebody was, you know, putting the wrong packages on my neighbor's porch. Like my neighbor kept telling me, like, I don't know why they just keep eating. And he's an older gentleman. And they were like, I don't know why he just, you know, (laughs) I don't know why. No, No, he actually talks really quiet. So I'm not going to, so he actually, uh, he's an older gentleman and he, you know, I talk to him when I'm out in the yard doing yard work and stuff, you know, we'd be doing yard work on the same day. And I'm like, what's up neighbor? You know? And he's like, I don't know what's been going on, <laughs> but I keep getting Amazon packages on my porch and they're not mine. They say a different name. It's got my address, but they're not mine. And he don't have this Southern accent. I don't know where this came from. So I'll continue. <laughs> But they're not mine. I think that's where I left off. They're not mine. And I was like, well, what, have you opened them? He's like, no, because they don't have my name on it, but it does have his address. So he'll, you know, call Amazon or whatever. And then next thing you know, somebody comes from uh, across the street or somewhere down the street. And they're like, oh, I'm sorry. That's my package. I think they said they put it in the wrong address on the wrong house. And so he's like, okay. 
So he didn't think nothing of it. He just said that, you know. He's like, I wouldn't have thought nothing of it, but it started to happen like, he said it thought it was weird because it had started happening like four and five and six, seven times, you know. So he, I was like thinking, hmm, let me put my detective hat on. No. <laughs> so I was asking him, you know, I was like, wow, man, I wonder if they're like, you know, telling them that they're living out to the wrong package and, you know, getting double the packages or whatever, you know, kind of scamming them. And that's what happened. They ended up getting in trouble. They were scamming their ass and got in trouble. I don't know what happened, but I seen all kinds of stuff, you know, and started hearing some things. And uh, they were, people were scamming. So you got to be careful out there if you start seeing packages show up at your house that ain't yours. And then somebody comes over like, oh, I think they delivered my package. And like, oh, really? You know, I'll just keep this one. You get the second one they send you. You know, you should just start keeping it. Like if it comes to my house, it's got my address and it ain't your name or nobody that lives here. It's got, but it's got my address and it's like specifically correct. I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it. You knock on my door. I'm gonna be like, yes. I'm like, did you receive a package of mine? I'm like, no. I'm like, oh, I thought you might have. I'm like, no, you didn't. You thought wrong. You thought very wrong. So I'm keeping them. I don't care. You know, you're going to, um, you're going to bring me a package and it's going to have my address. Like I said, if it's got my address, I will investigate it and I'll probably open it and check it because it does have my address. Maybe just to see, I'll shake it around and I'll give it a look, see, and I might just have to go with it, go through with it and open it up. But you got to be careful, man. Like you should pay attention. You know, if people uh, start sending stuff to your house, you know, like I said, I would do that just to see who it is, you know, just pull it in my house and be like, no, man, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, I bet you they wouldn't do it at my address anymore. <laughs> I would think they would stop if you started keeping it and saying, like, playing all stupid. When they come to your door, like, no, I didn't get no package. No. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, they show up at your house on your when Amazon's there to see if this is theirs. And I'm like, what are you doing in my house, man? This shit's got my name on it. You know, this time it would be really your package. You know what I mean? And they'd be coming around trying to snoop around your package. Ooh, that sounded weird, didn't it? Come around, snoop around your package. I kind of worded that very wrong. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Well, a lot of crazy stuff has been happening, humans. As you can see all on the news, people, it's all unstable out there. Um, You know, people out there, you know, fighting, you know, wanting some free, cho wanting, wanting the choice. You know, they want to have the choice to get it or not, you know. Whatever they, whatever your choice is, you know, they want to have the choice. But the fact that they don't is starting to upset people a lot, you know, and they're forcing it on kids and, they're, you know, we feel like they're forcing it, you know, and they're forcing it on everybody, you know, and a lot of people aren't with it. Um, but, I, you know, and there's some people, there's about, there's a few people out there starting to go on the streets and trying to protest and, you know, and talk about it and speak their minds on it, on the subject. But I thought there would be more. You know, because people went out there and marched and protested and rioted and looted for like all kinds of initials. You know, there was all kinds of initials to march and riot and, and loot and march and crazy and, you know, protest with for. But I don't see like all those kind of numbers coming out there and, you know, trying to protest for more people for our freedom. I was just really surprised that more people didn't go out there and go bananas for our freedom. And maybe it will happen. I don't know. But it's just kind of weird. Like, I just thought that that people would, you know, the way we reacted to other things, you know, back in the day, you know, when the other guy was in the house, like, people were going, like, bananas out there over all kinds of these initials to stand up for all these initials and all these things. I'm just saying all these initials that way because in case I forget one, I don't want to, you know, people be like, oh, what about me? You know, so I'm saying all the initials, you know, all whatever initials they were and all the uh, names, everything, you know. Everybody was out there fighting for all those things and stuff like that. But now I think everybody should come out together. And I, I just thought more people would have been out there for the freedom part. You know, so I don't know, man. It's kind of interesting. Maybe it could unfold. You never know. You just never know. I'll be staying tuned. That's for sure. I'll be staying tuned and watching. Staying tuned is one of those old phrases I said you... You're not supposed to use, and that's how you can tell my age. I was like, I'll be staying tuned. <laughs> I'll be doing. I'll be tuned in. 
So I'll be watching and paying attention to see if we go out there and start protesting and, you know, getting out there for our freedom. We'll see what happens, humans. We'll have to watch and see. I guess that will be the new stay tuned. We'll have to we'll have to watch and see. So stay tuned. <laughs> well, if the Illinois mayor doesn't get a lot of uh, you know, a lot of stuff already and a bunch of memes, people talk trash on the way she looks and like makes a lot of jokes on all that stuff. I mean, you could do that for days. Uh, but I'm not going to I don't know. I might go there, but I don't know if I got to go there. I might in a desperate mood in a desperate move, I might go there. No, I'm just kidding. But this woman says she claims that she can solve the gun violence problem in Chicago. Because in Chicago, um, there are some areas in Chicago where the gun violence is just like off the rails. Like people are getting shot every day, like a lot. I mean, I know there's people getting shot every a lot of places every day. But these people are like getting like... They're statistically all over the news. Like these guys are like, you know, MVPs of shooting. You know, like if there was like an NBA or athlete stat, like they always talk about these dudes stats. They don't talk about everybody else's stats because these dudes are like insane. So in Chicago, in this area, there's a lot of, like, a lot of gun violence. And she claims that she calls her, you know, has a remedy. And I, you know, I saw the article. I'm like, oh, let's see. Let's see. Maybe she's got a plan. Let's see what she's got a plan. Somebody's got to have a plan for something. Because uh, it seems like some dude ain't got no plan. But I won't go there. Maybe I will. <laughs> so she has a plan to stop the gun violence. It only came after, you know, statistics, like I said, come out and said that um, there were more shooting deaths of teenagers. Just teenagers alone. There were more shooting deaths of teenagers than there were of the COVID deaths. And it was like a, it was like statistically... You know, stated on there. I don't know care if they try to fact check. I mean, it was in the article. It was in everything. You know, it was all over the place. And um, they were showing that, you know, the, the website they got it from, which I don't even care what it is because I'm seeing it. <laughs> so they say there was more deaths from shooting young teenagers than you know what. So she decided to come out with this plan. She says she's going to sue the gang members. Yes, yes, humans. Sue the gang, gang members. I don't know. Do gang members get like pay stubs? Do they pay taxes? Is there any gang members watching can put in the t- in the comments like how could she sue you guys? Like what would she sue you guys for? For shooting? Or for, I don't know what she would sue you guys for. I don't get it. Can somebody answer me that question? She said she wants to sue. If there's any gang members watching, she wants to sue you guys or you gals. Damn it. You, you everything's whatever gang members out there. She wants to sue y'all. If y'all are shooting people in Chicago, that's her remedy to stop the violence. Do you guys pay taxes and pay to have pay stubs? Like, are you got to work a regular job and then you gang bang it, you know? Some people probably do. I mean, some people probably have to do both. Who knows? You know, there's probably, it's a tough world out there, man. Sometimes, you know, it's crazy. So people could probably do in those double lights. You know, I'm sure there is a lot of people out there. You know, there's a lot of people out there. In my young trouble past. But now I'm grown. <laughs> but anyways, you know, it's just like crazy, man. Do they got pay stubs out there? And what? Like, what are you going to, how can you sue a game member? I don't get it. Like, you got to have proof it's the person or you're going to sue just the whole gang. Like, you find out, like, the rival gang of this gang and then you're just going to, like, subpoena the whole gang? That's kind of weird. You're going to sue a gang member. I don't understand how you're going to do that. Like I said, and if there any gang members watching, put in the comments, how can she sue y'all? Like, and what would she sue you guys for? Like, they don't know what you guys make. They don't like just like have you guys like audited or they got to, I don't understand how they're going to sit here and sue y'all. I don't get it. I just don't get how they're going to do it. I don't see how they're going to do it. Suing gang members. That's quite strange humans. And not as strange as what was on MGK's face. For real. 
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, I would appreciate it if you would hit that like button, smash that subscription, and turn on those notifications because I am here twice a week. And I am Jaime, and this has been another episode of Meant to Vent. Till next time, humans. See ya. Thank <laughs> you.